Live. Give a minute or two for the people that's going to show up to show up. Let's see here. I'll make sure I got my video ready. Let's see here. Yep, I got my video ready. It's a little piece of video I want y'all to hear in a little bit. All right, y'all, let's go on ahead and get started. I want to give honor and praise to the Most High himself, uh, the only Savior, the only Redeemer. Uh, he is the mighty one of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he is the true and living God, and his name is Yahuwah. What's up, Ak? What's up, Ak? Yeah, it's about to pop off. We're going to get into it today, all right? Uh, I don't have a lot of topics today. Um, because most of the thing we're going to talk about is uh, we're going to talk about potent, the potential of war. You know what I'm saying? I got some articles I want to go over and it's a little little something I want y'all to hear that I found. <laughs> um, and I, I got an opinion on it. Um, man, it's going to be crazy. All right. I got I got two scriptures of the week. Shalom, shalom. I, thanks for stopping by, man. Uh I got two scriptures I want y'all to, to hear. Of course, I got my quote of the week. And then uh, the topics we'll go over today. We'll have a entertainment uh, news. We'll have climate news. Uh, we'll have war news. Then we'll have uh, political news. And the political news is just an opinion of mine. All right. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll read a little something. But most of what we got is going to be on that war news. I'm sure everybody paying attention to what's going on, man. It's it's getting real out there. All right. Y'all better y'all better be connected to the Almighty. I know that. Um let's go ahead and hey sis, how you doing? Uh let's see. Let's get into our scripture of the week. All right, y'all turn Leviticus 26 real quick. Let's see here. I've probably read this this scripture probably 10 or 12 times in my videos. It's a very important piece of scripture. And I just, I don't want people to, you know, forget the process of being saved. You know what I'm saying? Everybody so caught up in Christianity or came out of Christianity and they try to mix Christianity into uh, the father's truth. And we can't do that. You know what I'm saying? So Leviticus 26, we're going to start at verse 39. It says, those of you who survive shall be heart, heart sick over their iniquity in the land of your enemies. More they shall be heart sick over the iniquities of their forebears. And they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their forebears in that they trespassed against me. Yea, they were hostile to me. When I in turn have been hostile to them and have removed them into the land of their enemies, then at last shall their obdurate heart humble itself and they shall atone for their iniquity. That is, that is big right there, all right? We had to atone for our own iniquity. We didn't need a, a person on the cross to atone for our iniquity. The, the true word from the, from the Hebrew source, the Tanakh says that we would atone for our own iniquity, all right? And it doesn't it differentiate you know, for anybody, anybody who sins against the most high must atone for their iniquity. All right. And there, in a lot of a lot of times, the father would trickle down that curse 
through the bloodline. So that means the ancestors would have to atone for iniquity too. All right. It's not dying for somebody's sin. It's you, you're, you're going through hardship <laughs> and that is, you know, part of your salvation, atoning for your own sin. All right. It says, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob? So he wasn't going to remember the covenant until the bloodline, the ancestors went through the atonement for their sins. All right. And this, the, the stranger uh, that's connected to, to uh, the most high, same thing with them. It's no different. You know what I'm saying? It says, uh, I will remember also my covenant with Isaac and my, also my covenant with Abraham, and I will remember the land. For the land shall be forsaken of them, making up for its Shabbat years by being desolate of them, while they atone for their iniquity for the abundant reason that they rejected my rules and spurned my laws. Then even then, when they are in the land of their enemies, I will not reject them or spurn them so as to destroy them, annulling my covenant with them, for I, Yahuwah, am their mighty one. I will remember in their favor the covenant with the ancients, whom I freed from the land of Egypt in the sight of the nations to be their mighty one, I, Yahuwah. These are my laws, rules, and instructions that Yahuwah established through Moses on Mount Sinai with the Israelite people. And if you, if you continue to go through the Torah, you'll see that he made, uh, he made a way for the stranger to attach himself to his law and to his people. So, uh, you, but you have, to, you have to do the study to know that stuff, all right? The other scripture I want to go to, man, it's a flamethrower, uh, Isaiah 54. And usually when people go to Isaiah 54, they only read that last uh, verse of scripture in Isaiah 54. But I want to read all of Isaiah 54 so we can put the whole picture of the puzzle together. All right. Reading from my safari of Tanakh, it says, Shout, O infertile one, you who bore no child, shout aloud for joy, you who did not travail, for the children of the wife forlorn shall outnumber those of the espouse, said Yahuwah. Enlarge the side of your tent, extend the size of your dwelling, do not stint, lengthen the ropes and drive the pegs firm. For you shall spread out to the right and to the left. Your offspring shall dispossess nations and shall people uh, the desolate towns. All right. For those of y'all that don't know what that's saying right there, it's saying that those of us who didn't get to uh, who didn't get to embrace or live through the good years when he said the blessing and the blessing part of the blessing and curse, the blessing part. All right. Those of us do, who didn't get to experience the blessing part, he's talking to us now, the ones who experienced the curse part. All right. All the different generations that experienced the curse that that uh, attempted to live our lives in righteousness. All right. He said, for you shall spread out right to the left, right to the right and to the left. Your offspring shall dispossess nations and shall people the desolate towns. Fear not. You shall not be shamed. Do not cringe. You shall not be disgraced. For you shall forget the reproach of your youth and remember no more the shame of your widowhood. For the one who made you, whose name is Yahuwah of hosts, will espouse you. The mighty, the holy one of Israel, who is called God of all the earth, will redeem you. Yahuwah has called you back as a wife forlorn and forsaken. Forlorn means hopeless. Uh, can one cast off the wife of his youth, said your mighty one. For a little while I forsook you. But with vast love, I will bring you back. In slight anger, for a moment, I hid my face from you. He calls this slight anger. <laughs> I can't imagine his full anger, his full wrath. I can't even imagine that. All right. He said, uh, in slight anger, for a moment, I hid my face from you. But with kindness everlasting, I will take you back in love, said Yahuwah, your Redeemer. So remember, it said kindness everlasting. The little harshness that we've gone through on this planet, when he restores us, it's going to be an everlasting restoration. So take, just take this on the chin, all right? I, I, I often think about, you know, our plight, you know what I'm saying? The, the harshness of this system and, and what it does to suck all the life and energy out of us. And I don't let it get me down, though. I just, I just keep going, you know what I'm saying? That's what y'all got to do. Uh, it says... For this to me is like the waters of Noah, as I swore that the waters of Noah never more 
would flood the earth, so I swear that I will not be angry with you or rebuke you. For the mountains may move and the hills be shaken, but my loyalty shall never move from you, nor my covenant of friendship be shaken, said Yahuwah, who takes you back in love. Unhappy, storm-tossed one, uncomforted, I will lay carbuncles as your building stones and make your foundations of sapphires. I will make your battlements of rubies, your gates of precious stones, the whole encircling wall of gems, and all your children shall be disciples of Yahuwah. Let me say that again. And all your children shall be disciples of Yahuwah. That's the hope we have, all right? And great shall be the happiness of your children. You shall be established through righteousness, all right? You shall be safe from oppression and shall have no fear from ruin and it shall not come near you. Surely no harm can be done without my consent. Whoever would harm you shall fall because of you. It is I who created the smith to fan the charcoal fire and produce tools for each purpose. So it is I who create the instruments of havoc. No weapon formed against you shall succeed and every tongue that contends with you at law. You shall defeat. Such is the lot of Yahuwah's servants. Such their triumph through me, declares Yahuwah. So every time that somebody mentions Isaiah 54 and 17, without mentioning also uh, Isaiah 54, uh, 16, all right, they, they only getting part of, the, of, of what the Most High was saying right there. He said he creates the person who makes the weapons and the weapons, all right? And he creates the attitude of the people who handle the weapons, whether they are chaotic or whether they're righteous with them weapons. You know what I'm saying? But no weapon formed against us, regardless of all that stuff that's going on with those weapons and the holder of those weapons, no weapon formed all right, against us shall succeed. So, and and we know that they have tried not only to, to, to take our, our lives, they tried to take our identity. You know what I'm saying? So... Uh, but I wanted to read those uh, two scriptures of the week. All right. My quote of the week is from uh, everybody. Everybody should know who Muhammad Ali is. My quote of the week is from Muhammad Ali. All right. And this is kind of a some self-encouragement for myself. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when you when you get when you have stumbling blocks come up against you and sometimes you just you be in the wrong mindset that, man, it just. I'm just ready for it to end. But then, I mean, then you think about how insignificant, how little uh, the thing that made you think that thought was. And you just you'd be like, boy, you crazy, you stupid. But anyway, this is the this is kind of for me, but maybe it'll help one of y'all, too. Muhammad Ali said it isn't the mountain ahead to climb that wears you out. It's the pebble in your shoe. All right. And it reminds me of a, of a part of when I pray sometimes. I ask the most high, don't take the mountain out of my way. Give me the strength, the knowledge, and the creativity to climb the mountain. And so I've been I've been climbing this mountain of life for you know almost 50 years, and I'm I'm not gonna stop. I'm waiting on, on the most high. You know what I'm saying? So I encourage y'all to do the same. All right. Uh now uh let me uh of course it's time for me to plug my my merchandise. All right, there's there's a something I did on my own. I, there have been plenty of times in my life when I didn't complete certain tasks. That's a task I completed. I wrote a book. It's sci-fi. It's called The Seven Anomaly. You can get it on Amazon or wherever else you get books. All right, if you guys want to support, that'd be great. All right. Also, I do work with my hands. All right. And that says, as for me and my house, we will serve Yahuwah, and I use the uh, the paleo uh, to make Yahuwah's name because I wanted to show a little bit more respect than the English letters. All right, and if you're interested in me carving you out something like that, you can email me at uh, r o b d e v artwoods at gmail dot com. That's Rob Dev Artwoods at gmail dot com. All right. Let me see what the chat talking about before we go into our topics. Let's see here. All right, we got 
Let's see, all praise, honor, and esteem to our power, Yahuwah. That's hey, that's all that's that's what it is, Ak Mitch. Yes, sir. All right. All praise to the Holy One of Israel is what Ak Frank said. All right. All right. I appreciate you guys popping in with me. Um, I woke up, you know, not feeling a hundred percent myself this morning, but we gonna we, you know, you still gotta go through. And do what you, you know, what you set up to do because you want, you know, through the process, you want it to work. You know what I'm saying? If you quit, if you stop, you know what I'm saying? You ain't going to do nothing but but slow yourself down. So uh, I wasn't going to, I thought about sending a message, hey, I ain't going live today. I, but people do that stuff all the time and I ain't doing that. And I got my voice, I got my energy, so I kept going. You know what I'm saying? All right. So the first topic today we're going dis to discuss uh, is entertainment news, all right? And we're going to talk about OJ, all right? I don't know how many of y'all paid attention, but OJ Simpson died this week, all right? And it's, it's a number of angles I could have went with this, <laughs> but I, I chose an article uh, published on Fox News, all right? It says... Uh, Let's see. O.J. Simpson estate executor vows to contest 33.5 million payout. Goldman's get zero, nothing. <laughs> this was published yesterday. Uh, and let's see here. It was published yesterday by Chance Martin from Fox News. All right. I told y'all, I, I believe last week it was, it was that I told y'all sometimes they don't like, uh, they the people who write these articles, they don't want to take credit for them now because they know, you know, people is, is fact checking, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes artists or sometimes these, uh, these editors and these, these writers don't put their name, uh, you know, on the article. And I just don't, I don't think that's right. I don't think it's fair. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, all right, this says, and I ain't gonna read the whole article. I'm gonna just read through some of it. Uh, if you guys don't know the story of OJ Simpson, he was accused of killing his, his uh, ex-wife, uh, Nicole Brown Simpson, back in 1995 or 1994, and the trial was in 1995. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he was acquitted of the murder. But in civil in the civil courts, they charged him uh, with the murder and said he had to pay in excess of $33 million, you know, for that murder. You know what I'm saying? When you have people in, like just in the hood that get killed, and the pre when the person is found guilty, they ain't found guilty in no civil lawsuit or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? They was trying anything to make sure this this black man got held accountable for that murder. You know what I'm saying? But but what did Johnny Cochran say? If the glove don't fit, you must acquit. <laughs> I told my wife earlier, I'll never forget that. <laughs> we followed that trial closely back then, boy. All right. Uh, it says, Pro Football Hall of Famer O.J. Simpson's 1995 acquittal for the murder of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and a friend, Ronald Goldman, became widely known as the trial of the century. While Simpson uh, was acquitted at his criminal trial, a California civil jury later awarded the families of Nicole and Goldman $33.5 million after a wrongful death lawsuit. Simpson died Wednesday without having paid the lion's share of the money from the judgment. See, it don't even say in this article how Simpson died, man. They ain't giving, they ain't giving the man no respect. <laughs> they just, man, he died of cancer. All right. Hey, what's up, Ock? What's up, Ock? Kebby. Been watching you since 13, about to turn 17. Uh, hey, what's up, Kebby? Okay. Okay. That's what's up, man. Wish you well turning 17, too. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let me go down here. Let me find that one piece. All right. Also says that uh, O.J. Simpson decided that he, he didn't want his brain uh, donated to CTE research, research either. You know, a lot of NFL players are donating their they brains and probably other organs <laughs> to research centers after they die. You know what I'm saying? To try to figure out the effects of what football does to a human being. If you get hit 
for 12, 15 years by another human being going at high velocity, it's going to mess you up. You know what you say? I, OJ said, get, get it off the roof. <laughs> oh, let me, let me see what I said. <laughs> OJ said, get it off the roof. Yeah. <laughs> hey, they try, they, OJ, they trying to make this man pay all that money. You know what I'm saying? And at the, at the same time, not, they trying to, again, in the man's death, dis discredit him and disfame him. You know what I'm saying? He was acquitted. What happened to, you know what I'm saying? If the jury, if the jury says he didn't do it, what happened to, to you free and you not guilty? You know what I'm saying? But they still want the man to be guilty, you know, because, you know, it's a it's a skin thing. It's a melanin thing. Let's just let's just call it spade a spade. All right. Uh, all right it says, but Laverne, which is uh, O.J. Simpson's lawyer, O.J. Simpson gave his he wrote his estate over to his lawyer uh, 15 years ago. And it's in his name, uh, his last name is Laverne. It says Laverne said he specifically did not want the Goldman family getting any money from Simpson's estate. And this is, quote, what uh, O.J. Simpson said. It's my hope. Well, it, this is what Laverne said, representing O.J. in his passing. It said, it's my hope that the Goldmans get zero, nothing. He told the Review Journal, them specifically. And I will do everything in my capacity as the executor or personal representative to try and ensure that they get nothing. This lawyer, <laughs> this lawyer, 10 toes down for OJ. He said he ain't going to let the Goldman's get nothing. Goldman, the Goldman's, uh, that was supposedly Nicole Brown Simpson's new boyfriend. And he was, he was supposedly killed with her that night. So, and they, they blamed it all on OJ. Like OJ was going to slaughter both of them. You know what I'm saying? By itself. And like I said, the glove that they found there didn't even match OJ's hand. He put it on in court and it, man, that glove was all little itty bitty tiny and stuff. His big old hand didn't fit it. So, but anyway, they, they trying to get money now because, and OJ, <laughs> OJ didn't pay, he didn't pay them hardly anything. He had to sell his Heisman trophy and he got like, like 250 or 280,000 for, for his Heisman trophy. And that's all the money they got. He had to auction that off. And they that's all that's basically most of the money that they got. You know, he didn't pay most of nothing to what he was owed them in civil court. You know what I'm saying? So hey, OJ was a he was a G as as far as not letting not having them people get nothing off of him. You know what I'm saying? So, but that's that's our entertainment news. You guys you guys wanna chime in on OJ real quick before we go any further? Well, I'd say even if he did do it, it would have been in line with Tanak. Real talk, I, real talk. I mean, technically, she couldn't move on. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, she would, she with another man. It, it, it lines up with Tanak, man. So, and she divorced him. It, it had to be the other way around. He, he would have had to divorce her. So, it is what it is. That was his wife. Yep. So let's see here. Now we finished to get into there's something. Where is that at? All right. Now we're going to get into climate. All right. So it's just something that caught my eye when I was uh when I was going through going through some of these news topics. It says what biologists see from the shores of the drying Great Salt Lake. Did y'all know that the Great Salt Lake was drying up? It's just, it's just like the Dead Sea is drying up. I wonder what's going on with them too. You know what I'm saying? The Dead Sea in the Middle East and uh, and the Great Salt Lake over in, in uh, Utah. You know what I'm saying? I, w I wonder what's going on. Let's, let's, let's get a little bit uh, from this article. This article comes from NPR and it's written by Kirk Siegler. And it was it was an article from let's see from this weekend. All right, Salt Lake City, Utah. It says drive west of this sprawling high desert city past its newly built international airport through a series of locked gates into the Adubans Gilmore Sanctuary, and it's like entering another world. Or maybe better put, 
and otherworldly landscape, the vast and drying wetlands along the Great Salt Lake, the largest saline lake left in the Western Hemisphere, some 50 miles long and 30 miles wide. It's, a quite, it's quite an adventure to get out here, says Carly Badul, a wildlife biologist at nearby Westminster University. She's part of a team of scientists who have been tracking the lake's decline amid the West's uh, record mega drought made worse by climate change. They've been conducting weekly trips to various uh, sampling and study sites for the last several years at, re at the remote lake uh, that only recently started making international headlines due to its sharp decline. So the Great Salt Lake is shrinking and uh, they try to put it on, on, uh, on climate change. You know, the globe is global warming or whatever. But uh, we know in Tanakh, it talks about how the, the father is going to be drying up certain land masses uh, across the earth. So uh, I, don't, I don't think uh, no part of, of the world is off limits when it comes to uh, prophecy. So um, the Great Salt Lake is no different than, than uh, the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is a salt lake. Uh, the Great Salt Lake is salt and for whatever reason, they're evaporating into nothingness. And the Great Salt Lake, uh, I haven't done the research, but it wouldn't surprise me because of all the different man-made lakes in America, all the different, uh, what, I learned, what I have learned is a lot of rivers were dammed up to cover up some of the, the, the towns and areas, you know what I'm saying, below them where people live to hide artifacts and to bury artifacts and make sure we couldn't get to them, you know? So uh, I, it wouldn't surprise me one bit if they didn't dam up a few things that even created that salt lake. But uh, it's a salt lake, so, I mean, it's just, it's mysterious to me that there's salt in the middle of a landmass over there anyway. So uh, at the end of the day, though, I didn't know if, if y'all had seen that, but said that to say, uh, the, the earth is changing, you know what I'm saying? Just like the, the Tanakh said it would. It, we're going to have waterways drying up, and that, that's fulfilling prophecy, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, the Dead Sea, they said the Dead Sea has lost thousands of miles of shoreline. So it's crazy, man. They, they, they built hotels right off of the shoreline. Ten years later, they have to, go, they have to drive to the water. <laughs> Instead of being able to walk to the water, they have to drive to the water, so... All right, let's get into our next topic, which is the war. We're going to talk about war. All right. Let's see here. What? Let's let's talk about uh only let's talk about Russia and Ukraine real quick. All right, and then we're going to get into that Iran, Israel, Hamas stuff. All right, Russia and Ukraine is on day 780 of the war. Uh, just a few notes. It says, Commander-in-Chief of, of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Colonel General Alexander Zakirsky, said the situation on the Eastern Front has deteriorated significantly in recent days in the face of heightened Russia, Russian offensive. All right, Ukraine has said the situation around the Eastern Front line of city Kasiv Yar is difficult and tense with the area under constant fire. It lies 12 miles west of Bakhmut, which was flattened by months of artillery fire before it was captured by Russia last May. All right. Um, some more information I got is that NATO has started to enter the war over there. So we, we're going to have to watch Russia and Ukraine very closely, too, not just Israel. And Iran and Hamas, we gotta rock, we gotta watch uh, uh, Russia and Ukraine too. This is this is easily gonna turn into a world war. You know, I mean, can't get away from it. Um, Russia has been bombing all of the power structures in Ukraine. Ukraine is almost without power over there, so it's it's supposed to get ugly. It's supposed to get ugly over there for them people. And Vladimir Putin just sitting back chilling. You know what I'm saying? And I don't, I don't understand why, how the U.S. can send all our tax money over there, you know what I'm saying, and then let these people just get pumped. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? White on white crime going on over there, and them people just over there suffering and getting pummeled. 
with our money. What's the money? What what they doing doing with the money? I mean, they we giving so much money. They should be able to put up a nice little, you know, uh, fight. Give Russia a fight a, a fight back. You know what I'm saying? A, a fair, you know, what they call it in the streets, a fair one. But they getting pummeled over there. They, it ain't even ain't even an equal fight, man. And they send what they send ninety billion <laughs> of our money. You know what I'm saying? It don't make no sense. You know, and uh, and Russia, like I said, Russia, they just chilling. Uh, now let's go to uh, Iran. What what Iran done did? All right. First, I got this article from Reuters. All right. It says, U.S. will not take part in retaliatory action against Iran, White House says. All right. This article comes uh, this morning. Uh, it, it was updated 11 minutes ago. All right. It says uh, it gives it says it's coming from Jerusalem, Dubai, Washington. President Joe Biden warned Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu the U.S. will not take part in a counteroffensive against Iran if Israel decides to retaliate for a mass drone and missile attack on Israeli territory overnight, a White House official said. The threat of open warfare erupting between arch uh, Middle East foes and dragging in the United States has put the region on edge, triggering calls for restraint from global powers and Arab nations to avoid further escalation. All right. So right, as of right now, Biden has said that he is not going to allow the U.S. to interfere uh, with any retaliation all right, that Israel does to Iran. But what, what Iran has done, re they retaliated in an attack uh, on, on, uh, on, one, on their, some of their commanding officers in Damascus in, in uh, Syria. So Israel started this. Israel creating all this havoc all across the earth, all right, and they just being allowed to get away with it. But if we want to defend ourselves in the streets here in this nation, we'll go to jail for 10 years, 12 years, 50 years, whatever. But Israel is able to do all this just just chaos all over the world because they 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 Israel. Man, this this stuff is unbalanced. All right. And we know what the father says about uh, wicked balances and, and things that have false weights. All right. The father hates them. They're an abomination to him. All right. So uh, all th all this stuff going on all over the world is because Israel and America think they unstoppable and they think they they own the earth. You know what I'm saying? So that's why all this chaos got to happen. Catastrophic events are coming. All right. I'm not a prophet. I'm just telling you what what the prophecies say. All right. Now, uh. Let's continue with our with our coverage of, of Iran and Israel news. All right. Let me let me check in with the chat real quick. Let's see here. Mitchell Nelson said, facts, Israel is unhinged. Too bad they not real Israel. We know who the real ones are. Hey, much love. I shout out. We do know who the real ones are. And they 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 gonna find out soon enough, all right? The most offense, he wants to put this thing, he wants to turn up the heat on this thing. All right, let's see here. See, we got a live blog going here on first post. It says, Israel, Iran tensions live. India urges de-escalation as Iran fires barrage of drones missiles at Israel, all right? India has put out, put out their word that they want de-escalation. All right, they, India don't want the world to go to war because they know they're going to have to pick a side. At, at the end of the day, if you haven't already chosen your side, I know whose side I'm on. I'm on the side of truth. All right, all these different wars ain't the truth. They have to happen because of the truth. So I've chosen. They, the most time making these people choose, man. It says, let's see here. All right says, Israel PM vows strong response after Iran attack. Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, declared that his nation will harm anyone who attacks them directly and that his nation has been preparing for an Iranian attack for years. In retaliation for the bombing of Iran's embassy in the Syria, 
uh, Syrian capital of Damascus earlier this month, Iran late on Saturday launched a volley of explosive drones and missiles directly into Israeli territory. In recent times, and particularly in the last several weeks, Israel has been getting ready for an outright Iranian strike. We are prepared for every situation, both offensively and defensively, with our defensive systems in place. Israel is a powerful state. The IDF is powerful. The people are powerful, said Netanyahu. But I remember uh, Israelite Talk TV months ago reporting that the IDA, IDF wasn't that, that strong because Hamas was over there kicking their ass. So, hey, they can they can put this propaganda out there, but we know we know the truth. All right. Let's see here. It says Air India temporarily suspends flights to Israel. Air India on April 14th decided to temporarily suspend flights to Tel Aviv amid escalating tensions between Israel and Iran. An official said the direct flights between Delhi and Tel Aviv will be suspended for now. See, it's affecting these other countries now. All right. That's right. I, what, what I'd say, I saw that I got a glimpse of that, that message. He said, uh, Ahmed said they fitting to be schooled real soon. Strangers among Israel said Israel ain't nothing without our tax dollars. You're right, I, they ain't nothing without our money. All right? And we, we sending billions to Israel and we sending billions to Ukraine and we over here gutter struggling. Gutter struggling. It, it don't make no sense. Let's see here. <laughs> Here's something I want y'all to see. <laughs> All right, let me see if this is the picture. All right, so this is from Weon. All right, I want y'all to see this picture, see if y'all can see that picture right there. All right, it ain't coming through clear. But that's Netanyahu, and that's Joe Biden. <laughs> looking. Like, <laughs> that looks like a warm embrace, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That stuff be making me laugh in pictures they be taking. Netanyahu trying to act all sad. Joe Biden trying to act all concerned. Man, these jokers is, is puppets putting up a big old front. But it says uh, Prime Minister, or it says President Joe Biden in a conversation with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told him that the U.S. won't participate in any counterstrike against Iran, uh, according to media reports. This is why I'm saying the same thing, all right, confirming that that America is not supposed to intervene, all right? So we, we but we gonna see, we we already know that's a lie. We we put our hands in everything. Well, I say we, the, this government put their hands in everything, all right? Let's see here. All right, it says uh, on Saturday, April 13th, in a conversation with his Israeli counterpart, Biden sought to frame Israel's successful interception of the Iranian onslaught as a major victory and suggested that further Israeli response was unnecessary, a senior administration official told CNN. You got to win, take the win, Biden told Netanyahu. <laughs> but we all know Netanyahu is not going to do that. He, we, I just read before that that he said anybody that messed with Israel is going to pay the price. All right. So at the end of the day, Netanyahu, even though they had this warm embrace and they they confided in each other and all this stuff, Netanyahu said, no, I'm not listening to y'all. America, I'm not listening. NATO, I'm not listening. Anybody mess with us, going to pay. All right? And so we, we fix to have a... And, but here's the thing, too. When Israel, when Israel get into it with the big dogs, like Iran, they might be able to match Iran. But when they get into it with the big dogs, they're going to expect the United States to, to help. You know what I'm saying? To intervene. They're going to expect France and, and uh, Great Britain and Germany and Italy. They're going to expect all, that help for all, from all of NATO. You know what I'm saying? And that's how the most high fins, fins to get these mugs up down over there to the Valley of Jehoshaphat. It's coming. All right. Let's see here. All right. Uh, this is from Al Jazeera. It says... Hamas backs Iran after retaliatory missile drone attacks on Israel. Hamas affirms natural right of countries in the Middle East to defend themselves in the face of Zionist aggressions. All right. The pa Palestinian Hamas group has expressed support for Iran after it launched hundreds of missiles and drones at Israel in retaliation for a deadly assault on its consulate in Syria, capital Damascus. 
In a statement Saturday, Hamas, uh, which governs the Palestinian enclave of Gaza, said it affirmed the natural right of countries and peoples in the Middle East to defend themselves in the face of Zionist aggressions. All right. And I mean, that's all Israel is. Israel is trying to run the world basically from they from their location. All right, they're telling the United States what to do, they're telling Great Britain what to do, and they're trying to tell the, the Islamic countries what to do. And the Islamic countries ain't having it. Russia ain't having it. China ain't having it. You know what I'm saying? And that's why all this turmoil is going on. They're trying to put their foot down because they want to own all the world's wealth. That's what it all boils down to. The world's wealth. All right. And it ain't, it ain't, you know, it ain't going down the way they want it to. All right. Let's see here. Uh, a note, a note that I picked up uh, right before I went online, right, right before I went live, is that Al Manor, which is a, it's a publication in, I believe, Lebanon. All right, they're reporting that. Navatim Air Base in the Negev Desert of southern Israel was struck by 15 medium-range ballistic missiles during the Iranian attack, causing serious damage to the infrastructure and, uh, and aircraft of that Israeli Air Force, that, that particular site. And it says that that particular base is out of service due to damage right now. So, But we don't see Fox, CBS, and, and uh, CNN them reporting that. We see them saying that the Iron Dome, the Iron Dome worked, but but uh, Lebanon is reporting that Israel got direct hit last night. So hey, this, I mean it's up right now, and we 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 got to pay attention. You know what I'm saying? This this stuff is uh is getting real real drastic real fast. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the cost of Israel defending itself last night. All right, just for last night, just for, for 300 missiles and drones being knocked down, the cost of that was $1.3 All right, that's, that's, you know, some of my tax money went to defending Israel. All right, it don't make no sense. Some of your tax money went to defending Israel. And I ain't never been, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't never seen nothing over there. They, they don't even acknowledge the, the, the Israelites in Demona over there. That's why they put them in the desert out there by the nuclear plant. They didn't want them in their regular everyday civilization because they claim those Israelites in, in Demona are claiming to be the real people. You know what I'm saying? And they don't like that. So uh, just just continue to pay attention to this stuff as it unfolds, fam, because it's, it's fence to go down. It, it's going down. You know what I'm saying? World War Three is a is a bonus, and when you say World War, you're talking about the countries of the world. Everybody gonna be affected, especially when the Most High bring their behinds down to the Valley of Jehoshaphat. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, all right, let me. All right, so and that leads me to my last thing I wanted to talk about. All right, which was the political news. Will there be an election when we go to war? Because Obviously, at some point, we enter in one of these wars. We already there. The money, we already put the money in. All right? We done already, we done already cast our ticket into the war. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so we going through uh, all these, that, well, they trying to put us in there with, they trying to group all the Americans together. They know a lot of us is not down for what they doing. You know what I'm saying? And especially those of us who know the truth. All right. So as this war pop off, there's going to be uh, they're going to try to stop that election, I believe. But here's the thing. It's never happened before. We've never had an election that was stopped because of war. But I believe that that's how they're going to try to keep uh, uh, Trump out of office. You know, now I'm, I'm not voting for either one, but that's how they're going to try, try to keep Trump from winning. Is they're gonna say, hey, we at war, we can't do it. But back in 2020, all right, I did, did a little research. CNN did an article, all right, saying, and, and they supported having the election through COVID. All, right? all these millions of people that died during COVID, 
A global epidemic probably should have froze everything, right? Nah, they still kept the election going, right? You know what I'm saying? They still kept that election going. And so now they're going to try to come back. They're going to try, ain't even four years later. At some point down the line, I believe they're going to try to say, hey, we should we should skip this, this election right now because we're at war. You know, we're helping these countries at war. We should... We should slow down. We should, you know, take more time. Leave Biden in office. He, he's a he's a proven war guy. You know what I'm saying? That's what I think they're gonna try to do. All right. But we we there's already a precedent been set. All right. The precedent has been set that we don't stop the presidential election in America for nothing. Not even a global pandemic. All right. So the, this war should not they should not be able to get away with that all right but i think they're gonna try to pull something off that way whether it be civil war it, it shouldn't even stop doing civil war because abraham lincoln was in a civil war and he had to go to election he had to rewin his seat so this will be unprecedented if they if they if that comes down to where they stop the election all right now if you're an israelite or you're a hebrew however you you shouldn't vote anyway don't be don't be voting for people over you that that shouldn't be have power or shouldn't have the ability to tell you what to do and how to live your life. You know what I'm saying? They they we have our rules, we have our laws on on who we're supposed to select to uh, lead us, and we're waiting on uh, the Most High to put David back over us. He's supposed to raise him up from among us. So we we're not worried about putting non qualified people over us. You know what I'm saying? It gives them, uh, it gives them power. It gives them authority to tell you what to do and to, and to you know, send your tax money over to uh, Israel and Ukraine and Taiwan and wherever else they're sending our money to. All right, but time is running out. All right, let me check the, the chat real quick. See what's going on in the chat. Make sure I didn't miss nobody. Let's see, had a good conversation going on in here. CC Chi, what's up, CC Chi? Good to see you back over here. Glad to have you back here. All right. What, let me see what Mitch said real quick. Our tax dollars funding a genocide that Israeli start that Israel started feels like the Twilight Zone. You dang right, huh? Right? Shoot, man, they they start all this stuff. It's all about wealth and power. They want all the wealth of the world and they want all the power over the world. They trying to claim our identity. We not going to run this world like they have. All right? They've had their chance. You know what I'm saying? And they they messed it up. All this wickedness all that. I believe in them Hollywood parties. They them is all them is that's all Zionists. You know what I'm saying? I believe in that stuff. All that wicked stuff they be doing. Got, I mean, Kanye said they be having goats there and all kind of stuff, man. It's wild. You know what I'm saying? So it's time for them. It, they time is up. All right. Israel is fixing to be the head. The rest of the nation is going to be the tail. We're going to be the light of the world. and We're going to be telling them how to do stuff. All right. We're going to be walking out them laws in righteousness. And we're going to be and the ones that don't do it. They're going to get eliminated. Just put it like that. All right. Uh, channel plug of the day. You guys go check check out my brother, uh, Stranger Amongst Israel. He got some good information over there. Y'all know I'm all about sharing information and absorbing good information. So uh, go check out my brother, Stranger Amongst Israel. All right. Uh, each week I do my live. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a, a channel plug of the week. All right. Uh, also, I'm still trying to figure out what nuances I'm going to do on my other channel, Israelite Global. Uh, if you would, would you guys go over there and, and uh, subscribe to that channel so you don't miss nothing that I do? Because eventually I'm going to move a lot of what I'm doing here over there. All right? And this is going to be a channel where we just get to not truth and and uh, and to not education. And we're just going to grow uh, in the Tanakh on this channel. And I'm going to move a lot of the entertainment and a lot of the news and stuff over to Israelite Global uh, in the coming weeks. So you guys stay tuned for that. Uh, I'm still working out all the details, like I said, and the nuances. So, uh, but I hope you guys will continue to rock with me going forward. Uh, you guys be blessed. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. 
Make sure you, you give some kind of praise, reverence, or, or esteem to the Most High today, all right, and getting that to not and learn what his, what his righteousness is, and you're going to be cool, all right? Much love to y'all. I'll see y'all next week. Shalom and shalom.